Hello and welcome to It's All Good. I am your host, Latavia. And let me just get the address the elephant in the room. It has been a while. It has been a long time um, since I did an episode, posted anything, but I am back. <laughs> I am glad to be back. It has been, 2021 has been a year to say the least. It has been a long but fast year. Um, but there's also been a lot of good, just a lot of, I would say life has been lifing <laughs> um, in 2021. And I am ready to return or cancel my subscription to adulthood. It's not exactly what I thought. Now, definitely there are some days that I enjoy it <laughs> more than others. Um, but before I get too far into my ramble or just letting you all know what's been going on with me since you last heard from me, um, some things have not changed. I was actually listening to my first episode, the very first, uh, podcast episode. And for one, I want to say thank God for growth, <laughs> um, come a long way just in terms of my comfortability in, in doing the podcast uh, and having conversations with people, even though I can't see them <laughs> while I'm having it. And also just from a technical standpoint. Um, but in our, and listening back to that first episode, which if you have not heard it, I would definitely encourage you to go back and listen. Um, from back in 2019, I was talking about gratitude and mediocrity. A mediocracy and interestingly enough a lot of the things that I talked about in that first episode in the sense of it being easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day, uh, and struggles and things of your own life as well as things that are going on with your family or just the world in general that we can begin to take some things for granted and when I say we I mean me uh, you know, I, I remember listening, it said, you know, I was talking about just waking up in the morning, being able to see, being able to hear, or read, um, which those things that, if I'm honest, yes, I, there are still times where I forget and I just kind of, kind of have this, I don't want to say entitlement, but just this expectation that, yes, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to do these things and not thinking about how important those small things are the small moments are and even in remembering that it's not about a destination and just enjoying the process um, i think every day is a learning experience and i'm getting better at it but 2020 which i feel like is not over we you know the pandemic is still going on COVID is still real in these streets yes we have a vaccine and that has definitely helped uh return to some sense of normalcy or even more so I would say creating a new normal for us but I say all that to say that I am grateful to be alive um, I'm grateful to be where I am at this point in life. It is certainly, I am definitely in a season of transition, a bit of uncertainty, but I, I honestly can say I am learning to embrace contentment, um, understanding that difference between being content and being complacent. And as I... <laughs> recently discovered learning how to relax because I thought I knew how to do that. But um, this last six months, well, really all of uh, 2021, I would say has just kind of been a big mirror or um, kind of question mark to me of, do I know how to relax? And am I really embracing the journey um, and and trusting the process I think back to when I you know and starting this podcast and you know what I often tell people 
that it's about is just the ups and downs, the joys, the trials of adulting, of living and navigating life. And me sharing my journey with learning to accept the process. And as I mentioned at the beginning, life has been lifing. And I've talked to a few friends in recent months and it seems that definitely seems to be the a consistent theme across the board. Um, of course, it looks a little different for everyone. But this year, I would say more, I won't say more than ever, but definitely in a big way, I had to surrender to the process, to trusting the process in multiple uh, areas of my life. And what I would say in terms of in thinking of the gratitude or my gratitude moment for this episode, there are so many people and things that I'm grateful for as I sit here and think I could, I could list several. Um, and, but overall, I would have to say I'm grateful for the process, um, the processes that I am I've been through that I'm currently going through um I'm I'm grateful for them I don't always like them they don't always feel so great but I'm honestly grateful for them because it is it is making me better it is making me stronger it is helping me to be vulnerable um which if you've been listening for any amount of time is something that I have admittedly struggled with um, because before I definitely saw vulnerability as a sign of weakness, but I've definitely learned um, and embracing that it's actually a sign of strength or it takes courage to be vulnerable, um, to be my full self, my authentic self in all situations um, because there have been who so many things that have happened just in the country in the world this year like i said you know in the midst of the pandemic racial injustice systemic racism and oppression continues um jacked up laws unfair laws um uh, housing issues just could go on and on um but I would say in this year of 2021, I definitely spent a lot more time just focusing on me and how to rest, what resting looks like for me. I have embraced naps. It's still a struggle. I thought taking naps would be a whole lot easier for me, but trying to shut down midday <laughs> has proven to be a bit more of a challenge than I anticipated. But I am committed to this process and I am learning. Um, but one of the processes that I would say that I've gone through and in some ways still going through that was just a really big, a big milestone um, for me this year was I bought a house and <laughs> it's still crazy because some days I wake up and I'm like, is this real? It's still just kind of some days I still have those moments of, okay, this is it. I don't, you know. I'm not going to have to move this. Somebody's going to come and say this was all a joke. You were dreaming. It's real. Um, and in terms of a process, it's definitely been a long time coming because for, I mean, as long as I can remember, I said, you know, one of my goals was I wanted to buy a house. And then definitely after becoming an adult and working and renting and working in um, various aspects of of real estate and, and um, being in the leasing space, learned a lot about it. And then just the ridiculous prices for rent over the years. And I have moved a lot um, as a child because of the, my dad being in the military. And then also just as an adult, because, hey, if it has, if it wasn't serving me, I, I would move on. Um, I've definitely done a lot of moving, but I would say since at least 2014, 15 is when I would say I got serious in terms of trying to see about buying a house because it was very clear then 
that a mortgage would be cheaper than paying rent. And at least if I'm paying a mortgage, you know, it's for me, yes, it's still a debt. And I've been seeing more and more about, you know, how a mortgage is a big scam because it's more debt, um, even though it's an asset. But I'm not going to get on to that. But like I said, since 2014-15 is when I like first started trying to learn about the process, seeing if I could get qualified for a mortgage, um, which... All one of the constants in that was student loan debt. Your student loan, your debt to income ratio is too high. This, blah, you know, so on and so forth. That I'm sure I am not unique in that, in the sense of I've got, oh, or, and I'll never forget like one of the first people, a few times, oh, your credit's great. Your income is great. You could qualify for a good amount of house with this income. Oh, but these student loans, we just can't do it because of the laws changing and the requirements that even if you're in deferment, they have to use something about 1% of the total amount due has to be considered as your monthly payment. Even if that's not what you're actually paying um, or even if because for a while they were still in uh, in school deferment because I kept going to school. But like I said, that was a a barrier in a process that honestly in 2018, when I would say I was, I had a realtor, I had gotten pre-approved or so I thought, had started looking at houses, found a house that I wanted to get. Um, and then in starting the process of, hey, I want to put a bid in, I want to send my earnest money. And then the lender telling me, oh, I'm sorry, I actually, I can't. I can't approve you because of the debt's income ratio. And that was back in 2018. And at that point, I really just kind of, I never completely gave up, but it was just kind of one of those things that I resigned like, oh, okay, this just isn't going to be, this just doesn't seem like it's going to happen for me um, anytime soon, or it's going to have to be after I'm married or who knows, I might have to be 40. I don't know what it would be. It just it started to, the light started to seem to get dimmer in terms of being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel with respect to me becoming a homeowner. Um, and then fast forward to 2019, 2020, had some more life experiences, things and challenges um, that it just became like, okay, well, at this point, you know what, I'm just going to be renting for the foreseeable future because these loans are not going anywhere. Um, my income is still my income. And I just kind of, I just essentially in a way gave up. And then the, in the midst of the pandemic, you know, we had that lovely, or it's still going on the cares act forbearance where it was okay we're gonna you know no interest no payments and i'm like oh okay great maybe and then i remember talking to someone and they were like well yeah no just based on everything you have going on not yet you need to wait like another three years okay fine didn't want to hear it but at least now i know and in terms of had something that i could kind of start working towards again um, so I had just kind of accepted that and resigned like, okay, it's not happening now, at least three years. So what, you know, this is what I need to do and started kind of strategizing, coming up with a plan for how to best, you know, address day to day life and bills, saving, paying off debt. Um, so that when that three year mark came, I'd be ready. Um, but clearly God had other plans or had something else working because towards the end of 2020, I started looking for, you know, places to rent because it was about to, lease was about to be up and started looking, you know, like I said, just at different places. I'm looking at apartments and then it was, hey, if I'm going to be paying this much in rent, I might as well try to rent a house because it doesn't make sense to pay all of this for, you know, a small amount of space. When there were houses for rent for the same amount as one bedroom, some in some situations less. So just going through my normal apartments.com, Zillow, Trulia, all of the all the different excuse me, rental websites, 
and ended up getting and trying to look at one place that was for rent it was a house like it was a townhouse ended up getting connected with this realtor um we get there we're talking you know we connect we're talking she shows me one or two places and then just having the conversation about everything that I was looking for she's like well, why are you you know why are you renting why aren't you trying to buy and I'm like well <laughs> I would love it would much you know I would much rather buy than rent but based on you know my current financial situation I talked to somebody and they told me you know basically not right now you're not ready yet we can't qualify you yet and so she's like well I don't know I have somebody who's been helping people and so on and so forth so I was like okay you know it doesn't hurt anything to have a conversation um so ended up connecting with her mortgage person and this was I want to say November of 2020 and he looked at everything we had a conversation I told him about my previous experiences and disappointments the student loans and he was basically he's like hey I can't do it right now but come March April of 2021 um should be able to and we talked about some things that I needed to do um in terms of just plans so after hearing that and my lease was supposed was, was going to be up in January I remember just thinking like okay March April is not that far away as opposed to signing another lease um and committing essentially to another year of paying rent maybe I just you know see what I can do in terms of waiting and thankfully I have parents who love me and had space for me and welcomed me um so I talked to them about my my thoughts on it and my plans and they were supportive so when my lease ended in January Instead of moving somewhere else, I put my stuff in storage and I moved back home because um, thankfully I was working from home or working remotely. So my location was not as important. And I just essentially set a goal of like, okay, I will move back in and this way I can save faster and also, um, you know, work, continue working on the thing so that way when that March April time frame comes I can you know start working on the process so it sounded all great in November December when I was saying it and then when the time came to actually start packing up and moving and it was like oh wow I'm really about to move back home which you know that's um I would think mentally emotionally that was much more uh taxing than I thought in the sense of just hey I have been living on my own pretty much since I was 18 you know I was in college but I have not lived consistently in my parents home since I was in high school and so it was just kind of trying to prepare for what that was going to be in the sense of I don't do things exactly the same way that I did when I was in their house um still have all the principles but you know live a little different so having that conversation it was was definitely it was weird of like okay let me be um mature enough of you know hey this is what I do how I do things what are you know essentially having that conversation with them hey what are the ground rules what are your expectations uh around me being here because you know, I'm yes I'm moving back in you all are helping me but I'm also I'm not a tenant per se, like y'all are still my parents. So I want to make sure I'm respecting you all as well as your house and your rules, but also at the same time, want to make sure that you all understand that I'm not a kid anymore. So it was interesting, you know, just broaching that topic and having that conversation, but I'm grateful that, you know, we had it up front because it definitely made a difference. And I would say even in that, I learned from all of the different experiences I've had in, um, I've had a few roommates or housemates. So learning from that in the sense of, you know, it's definitely better to address things up front and kind of set the expectation and ground rules 
going forward so that there's not a matter of something happens and then trying to figure it out then but fast forward so like i said come january i'm moved back in um <laughs> that was like I said, an adjustment to say the least that could be a whole nother uh conversation but essentially and because i was not trying to permanently move to north carolina i was still back and forth uh, most of you know in terms of like doctor's appointments or just business wise or essentially in terms of permanent address wise i was still a maryland resident and so there were certain things that I'd already scheduled. So I was back and forth between Maryland and North Carolina for the first half of the year um, and kept in contact with the realtor that I had connected with, um, kept in contact with the mortgage offer, the loan officer. And so when March came, yeah, I want to say it was like mid -mar mid to end of March, middle of March, um, you know, kind of met back up with or revisited the conversation with him. We essentially kind of did a formal application to see where I stood, what things were looking like. And I got my pre-approval letter, <laughs> which even in that it was like he had told me, yes, it's, it's pretty much a done deal. It'll be fine. But just based on everything else and in my own fears um it was even although there had been a yes you'll be able to get approved it won't be an issue it was still I for me I couldn't fully accept it or embrace it until I saw it in writing um but finally got it and it was like okay now I have this so because my dad is also a realtor and even from from him and like I said just from my experiences working in and around real estate over the years i know the importance of having a pre-approval letter before you start looking at houses um and like i said going from my other experience where i had a verbal you know hey you're pre-approved this is the amount and i started looking and then i got attached <laughs> so it was just like i was trying to avoid all of that didn't want to go through that again so um i had looked at some houses and if those of you listening if you know anything about the what the market was doing in 2020 even earlier in this year it was definitely a seller's market um it was low inventory and then things were houses were going like hotcakes like literally there would be a house would be listed on monday by wednesday it was under contract sometimes the same day and so it was like i was looking you know on all the I was on Zillow, Redfin, Realtor, truly all of the sites in terms of looking at houses that were for sale. And it was slim pickings, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and then also just being in North Carolina, I was also, as I'd be out riding my bike, walking or just driving around, seeing for sale signs, looking at the prices of houses down there were significantly um, <laughs> cheaper so it was kind of like, oh, wait, should I try to buy down here or should I, you know, do I stick to this? I want to stay in Maryland. So it was like I said, there was a lot of internal conversations, internal conflicts of just like, OK, God, is it is this the right time? Do I need to be moving to North Carolina? Is it, you know, staying in Maryland? Is that the right thing? So just a lot of soul searching, praying, uh I would say my versions or attempts at meditating to figure out what was right. Um, but in, in, in the midst of that, or I would say this was all in the midst of still working, doing the podcast, you know, trying to maintain my relationships with friends and family and going back and forth <laughs> to Maryland um, while living in North Carolina. But like I said, uh, towards the end of March, I did get the the letter, like the pre-approval letter. Um, and so then I started my trips to Maryland kind of ramped up because I was coming for long weekends. I think a couple times I came for a week. So that way I could connect with my realtor to actually, you know, go and, you know, physically see houses because I was, you know, 
looking at pictures and listings just about every day that got overwhelming because it'd be like it'd be something I really liked but the price was way more than I wanted to pay or there was one the price was great but it was going to require a lot of work um and so I'll never forget one of the days that I came up we I want to say we looked at at least 16 houses in one day so we were it was um we were wasting no time because it would be like I let her know hey these are the dates I'm going to be there um what can we do um and so I definitely have to you know definitely shout out to her and appreciate her so thank you Takia um because she was diligent she was patient she was thorough in terms of just making sure you know what I said I wanted um you know trying to get as many of those things in terms of like a wish list in terms of the listings that were available and where we would go trying to stay in the area that I said I wanted to stay in as well as within the budget um quickly learned that what I wanted and what I wanted to pay did not align so definitely had to make some adjustments um but in the midst of all of this like I said I think I ended up bidding on at least three maybe four and kept getting outbid um then there was one that I really liked but turned out it was it was an estate sale that was also subject to a reverse mortgage so that one just kind of sat and to this day I don't know what happened to it um but there were I want to say it got to the point of I want to say like the end of March or no early April on one of the trips I had gone to see multiple houses found one that it was like okay it didn't have everything on the list but it had like 75 to 85 percent of it it was well within the price point you know the price or budget range that I wanted to stay in it was in the county or the area that I wanted to be still a little further out but it was, hey, this is doable. Um, you know, had already thought of some things I could do to change it because because it was less, I'd have more room to do some renovations up front. Put in my offer. It was great offer. And then it was they went with someone else's offer because they were the other offer was willing to forego the inspection. And at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm mad, but I'm not mad because I technically didn't get outbid. It's just this person is willing to forego the in inspection. And if and that was just one of the things at that point, I knew I was going to be doing FHA financing. So an inspection was required regardless. But I also, that was just something, you know, like I said, knowing what I, or having learned and knowing what I know, I was going to get an inspection regardless because I need to know as you know I need to know as much as I can um before committing to such a big purchase but after that I remember telling my mom because she had come up with me on that trip that hey you know what at this I'm done I need a break this is too much because I think at that point I think all but maybe one weekend um I had been up looking at you know I've been looking at houses but going over everything um like I said all while trying to all while maintaining my job and everything else and I was just tired and I was like I'm done I'm not looking I need like a good week I need a good two weeks or maybe even a month and you know I was like maybe this just isn't maybe this isn't the right time maybe this isn't for me maybe I jumped the gun I don't know it was just a lot of questioning and that was a I want to say that was a Thursday so we drove back a Thursday or Friday came back and I was just like I'm done I hadn't told my realtor that yet because I was just like I need some time and I want to say maybe three days later she called me was like hey I just found you know someone reached out to, reached out to me about a listing it seems to be, you know, it sounds like it has all the things that we've talked about, but I'm not sure. She's like, it's going to, you know, it was scheduled to be listed in like a week or so. But she was like, you know, they're, they're, the, motive, the sellers are motivated, want to do it. So she's like, she was going to go by and she would take a video 
because I was like, yeah, I just left. I'm not coming back. Um, but she did that, sent a video. I was skeptical because the location was nowhere near where I wanted to be. But um, when I looked at the video, it was just like, oh, wow, this is, this looks nice. You know, this is, has just about everything that I've been saying that I want. It was in a price range that I felt, um, you know, comfortable in the sense of affordability. Uh, so I was like, okay, sounds good. You know, tell me more. But because of the timing and the way the market was and may still be, um, it was a matter of, okay, it's scheduled. Like I think that was a Sunday, Sunday or Monday. It was scheduled to be listed like the end of that week. And so it was like, hey, we can go ahead and submit a, an offer. <laughs> um, because I was like, hey, at that point, you know, I wasn't going to be able to come up for about a week. And uh, it's part of me was like, eh, I don't know. I don't want to do this because I haven't seen it. I've seen a video, but I haven't physically seen it. I haven't laid eyes on it. I don't know. This just seems crazy. Um, so she had a conversation with her, looked over it, talked to some trusted people about it, getting their thoughts, and it was a parade. And I'm like, okay, God, if this is it, um, then you know, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust her. I'm gonna trust you, and I'm gonna surrender to this process. So put an offer in without seeing the house um, physically, and got under contract i would say drama and foolishness ensued in terms of just some of the back and forth with the uh the sellers and i and just it's like it's like the people say you know you can know something in theory you can read about it you can hear about it but until you actually go through it you don't fully understand what all those things mean how it looks how you'll feel and so i would say that was definitely the case for me and i'll definitely see if i can have my realtor um, come on so that we can talk and she can talk from, you know, her perspective in terms of just what that was like, what was going on, you know, things that I wasn't aware of, you know, how it was for her on, on from her end. But I will say, thankfully, like I said, took some back and forth, um, but was able to get under contract, like I said, sight unseen. Um, I want to say we kind of finalized everything in terms of the contract and the terms maybe that Wednesday or Thursday and then that following Sunday I came up to to see it and also get it inspected so I was seeing it for the first time while it was being inspected um houses in Waldorf I'll just say yeah it's Waldorf um Maryland which I had little to no knowledge about other than the fact that it is far and feels like another world <laughs> compared to where I was living um in Maryland um and so that was another I would say hurdle I had to get through a mental emotional hurdle I had to get over in the sense of this is completely different from everywhere I've lived in Maryland it's separate from you know it's far away from all of the people that I know my quote-unquote life uh, in Maryland was somewhere between Baltimore and, and Prince George's County. Um, this is out, this is further away. I was trying to get closer to, to my church. This is further away. So it was a lot of those things. But once I actually got here and kind of explored the area a bit, I felt more at ease, more at peace about it. Um, and so, like I said, this whole... I finally closed, like I said, I saw it April 19th um, and then, you know, got the inspection report back. There were some things. So just going through that whole process of negotiating the terms, what they were going to, what if any concessions they were going to provide, um, what they were going to cover, what they weren't going to cover, what all I was going to need to do, uh, you know, trying to figure out homeowner's insurance. Um, a warranty, just all these things that I would say it was always, I want to, I want to get a house. I want to get a house. And I know there's other things that come along with it, but realizing how much 
I did not know. Um, and there were so many decisions that had to be made quickly that it's like, oh, it was just overwhelming. It's like, I want this. I'm grateful for this. But this is a lot and it's stressful. And in saying that, I think about uh, Jonathan McReynolds. I don't know if it's a song or something he he just said it random um said it outside of that but in the think it was the song adulting in the sense of the things that we want that we worked for can also be overwhelming can also be stressful in the sense of obtaining it and then maintaining it and it's like yes it brings me joy it's something that i want but it's also work involved you know it's not just but you know as they say anything in life worth having is worth fighting for or working for um so like i said i will save some of the details of the actual process for when i i have takia um on so that we can talk about that part but just from i will say from the middle of april till may 17th when i finally closed um it was a long and stressful month um a lot of <laughs> a lot of miles on the car back and forth um and but in all of it i i can't it would not be possible uh definitely without the grace of god but my village um and and my realtor being a part of my village even my mortgage broker or mortgage um officer um he was very helpful in the sense of just the things that I didn't know or where I thought I knew, but I wasn't sure when I had questions, they were both very responsive in, you know, answering them or walking me through them or pointing me in the right direction. And I'm grateful for having people in my life, um, primarily my parents who have gone through this process before. I have some other, had some other friends who've purchased before and I also happened to, I was, uh, I had a few friends who were also looking and going through the process. Um, my best friend, actually, we ended up closing. We ended up closing on our houses. I want to say within like two weeks of each other, she closed before me, but it was just even in the midst of all that, it was like, this is like, oh, wow, we're really, like I said, at the beginning, I said, yes, I want to cancel my subscription to adulthood, but also the, the joy of it is this is something that you know we talked about i remember with some friends of like some things that we want to do we'd like to be able to accomplish um and even like one of my friends she also wants to get into investing in real estate and so it's like this is kind of that you know being able to take that first step but it it was just within that month of trying to get like okay i kind of see the finish line but I don't, I never did hurdles, but it felt like there was a hurdle every other day or every day. It was something different, literally. Um, and I know that everyone's experience is different. There are some similarities, but I would say the process was definitely one that there were multiple times where I was ready to literally walk away, lose money because it was like, this is too much. Um, I don't want, <laughs> but like I said, the, at the end of the day, I was able to close and purchase my home. And I have now been in the house for a little over six months. And even, you know, it was like, okay, close, got the house, then get in. And of course, um, cause it's an older house. So there were some things just not even that there are necessarily problems, but just making it my own learning about stuff accepting the fact that okay when something happens or goes wrong i can't submit a work order to the leasing office or the maintenance team i gotta you know i have to find um vendors or contractors to do things so even you know so that's a new i say this a new part of the process or the journey um and and experiencing living mastering or i won't even say mastering but adapting to being a homeowner um and learning to paint um you know the taking on it always sounded good to say oh yeah I like a good DIY project I want to do it but then actually doing it so there have definitely been some 
some small wins, some big wins in terms of just realizing, oh, okay, I can do this. Um, and that sense, of, I would say there's definitely been a sense of accomplishment in terms of some of the things that I've been able to do or get done in the house. And recently I had a housewarming and it was great to not only, I love hosting and having people over and doing things, but I hadn't done that since pre-pandemic. Um, and so it was like, on one hand, it was great to be able to do that and have people, but even bigger, but being able to have my village um, come together with me to celebrate this new step, this new journey. Um, and one of the things I would say that I appreciate, another thing I appreciate about my realtor is I would say she's definitely gone above and beyond anything I thought in terms of what I think about in terms of a realtor, because not only, you know, does she assist me in terms of finding house and, you know, working with me through that process, she also hosted, um, or, you know, through or hosted me, uh, uh, my housewarming. And I would say she's definitely kind of become part of the family, a friend. Um, and so it's just, it has been a learning experience to say the least, but in spite of all of the stress um, that has come from this process this year, I am truly grateful to have, not even, I don't even want to just say accomplished a goal, but been able to let go of my fears and preconceived notions long enough to actually trust the process um, and continue because there are still things that I don't know and that I'm learning, especially in this process of, of owning and the things that come along with it. But like I said, every few days, it's, it's just kind of like kind of a sitting back in like, oh, wow, this is here. Like, you know, okay, God, this, this is, this is real. This is here. This is, this is mine. Um, and also knowing that when people are visiting, you know, I have space and it was, my parents have been up a few times and it, it's, it's in some respects, it seems small, but it's like really big to me because for as long as I can remember, whenever they came to visit, they would have to get a hotel or um, you know, I'd give them my bed, I'd sleep on an air mattress. And it's like, now I have a space for them, you know, that's designated that when they come, whether they're coming to see me or they're just in the area, they have the option to stay with me, you know, and have a bed, <laughs> not just an air mattress. And they don't have to get an, uh, an uh, uh, excuse me, a hotel or when friends come to visit, like, if something's going on with a friend, I have space for them. And like, that's really me having a house is so much more than me just having a house or own, you know, owning a house to say I own a house. It to me represents the things of it's another way that I can give back another way that I can help family or friends, you know, or anything, someone who's in need, I have space um, to do that, whether it be you know, having a game night or a Friendsgiving a gathering where, you know, everybody can come together, you know, ladies night, people coming over, whatever it may be. If, you know, we need to, or I'm doing like a group study, a book club, something. It's like knowing that I now have the space for that. Um, it's, that's a joy that I don't exactly know how to do you know to describe but it's like that is that excites me more about having a home as then then just to say you know I bought a house uh, but it's also part of one of those things like okay God It's definitely not pretty. It's not fun, but um, do your best to surrender to the process every day if you have to. Um, 
And I know for me, sometimes it's easier to do that in some aspects of life. It's easier to do that than in others. But what I have been working on and towards for myself is getting to the point of where in every aspect of my life, I am trusting and I'm, I'm surrendering to the process. I'm trusting God. I am and trusting in action, not just in words um, and embracing this journey because like I said life has been lifing and one thing I would just say at this point that I'm I would say is true regardless it's going to continue life will continue to life and it's always going to be something whether it be in your personal life whether it be the foolishness that goes on around us in this country and the world um our our messed up, sometimes backwards uh, legal system that has me questioning so many things daily, especially right, you know, in this season. But I, I say, trust the process. I am going to continue. This is a challenge to myself and a challenge to each of you. Um, trust the process and make sure that each day you're taking some time to reflect or acknowledge what you're grateful for, whether it be a person, a thing, um, you know, just take some time each day, trust the process and remember that it's not about a destination, but enjoying the journey when you, as you get to that destiny enjoying the journey enjoying the the process of it all so thank you for listening and until next time